Hi everyone, Gary Chillingworth here for Egg and World magazine, Shooting and Country TV. Welcome to Life at the Range. Well, uh, today's video is all about prep for the HFT World Championships, which is coming up at Borderswood um, in three days. Today is Wednesday morning. Um, I should have got this video done earlier in the week, but I'll be honest with you, I, I had a few things to do and uh, I haven't really been with it. Um, and I've left my prep way too late. Um, usual thing for me, but there you go. I had an email saying, look, it's my first World Championships. Um, what do I need to do? What do I need to take? So I thought I'd put a little video together. Um, we'll just do a little chat about what my prep is for the HFT World Championships. Um, so enough with the intro. Let's get on with the prep. And we will be doing some shooting, I promise. Okay, so my prep obviously has been slightly different this year uh, due to my injury. Up until a week or so ago, I was planning on shooting sticks, but I've now found a way where I can get up and down from a peg safely. Also, I'm really bad on sticks, and a couple of times when I was trying to shoot off sticks, my legs started to spasm really badly, and I just didn't think that would be a good place to be um, shooting sticks for the weekend so I'm going to give it a go we're going to try and shoot recoiling um, and let's just go and have some fun there's virtually zero chance of me winning but we're going to give it a go I'm just going out there I've not shot for ages so I just want to have some fun so I've got my list and a list is an incredibly important thing to have when you're prepping for a world. And what I'll do is I will put up a photograph of my list at the end of the video. So if you want to take a screenshot of it and, and have a look, uh, you're more than welcome to. Right, so your prep starts when you're at home. And I'm not talking about here on the range. Um, I'm talking about just getting basic information that you're going to need for the weekend. So we'll go through our list. Now, the first thing on my list, list is weather. What's the weather going to be like? Well, I had a little look earlier, and currently on Saturday it's going to be dry between 60 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't do centigrade. And on the, on the Sunday, though, it's going to be wet. It's going to be raining. So I need to pack my wet weather gear, bottoms and top, and also an umbrella, because if you're standing there in the rain, getting wet and miserable, you're not going to have a good day. So always check your weather. Now weather isn't just rain. Wind is somewhere between 6 and 10 miles per hour. Now today's Wednesday and tomorrow I noticed that Maldon District the weather is also going to be between 6 and 10 miles per hour. So my plan is to go down to MAD and do a bit of shooting and do a little bit of measuring and seeing what my gun will do in 6 to 10 miles per hour of wind. 15 yards, 30 yards, 40 yards. I, I sort of know what it does, but I've not shot since early June. So I'm very, very rusty. So go and do a little bit of, of weather research and that could actually give you a, a big advantage. Look at the address. Make sure you know where you're going. We shot at an event, I think it was on the Southern Hunters a few years back, and people had got the address off of a website and they thought they knew where we were going, ended up miles away. I know this because I was one of the shooters who did it. Um, yeah. Um, now the address for Balderswood off their website is the, or the postcode is NG123GE. Um, obviously go to the WHFTA portal, that will give you all the information, but they've also got a what three words address, and that is Verb Dodges Flamenco. We'll put it across the bottom, and that takes you to the entrance of where you need to go. But again, the WHFTA portal is where you need to go. Again, through the portal, check what session you're in. You might be starting PM on day one, or and then AM on day two, because you will be doing opposite. You won't be doing AM, AM, or PM, PM. You'll be doing PM or AM, or AM and PM. So make sure what session you are in. Um, check your booking times. Uh, make sure that you what time you've got to be booked in for for both of the sessions and where you need to book in. Again, all the information is on the portal, but we will put it up just down below. But don't take my word for it. You go to the portal. 
and then I've got something written here which I really can't read okay don't know what that says but we'll come back to that okay so that's what you can do at home to start with next is your kit now I'm not just talking about your gun and your scope I'm talking about food and water now at Borderswood they are going to be well if it's anything like last year the food was great they did amazing sausage rolls bacon uh burgers and and all stuff like that there was plenty of drinks available and they didn't unlike some events i've been to you didn't get ripped off it was all relatively well priced um but like i've said in videos in the past i personally don't like to eat uh, large amounts of white bread and stuff like that before i shoot um i'm pre-diabetic and if I eat lots of carbs, it spikes my blood sugar and I end up feeling really unwell. So I'm going to take food that I can digest easily throughout the day. And then I will save my sausage roll or my sausage bap or whatever until after I've shot. So think about taking food, think about taking water, think about taking sort of anything you want for energy that you can, that works well for you. Um, insect repellent. Um, I always take some inse insect repellent. Uh, my friend Jeannie, she believes in Skin So Soft by Avon. Uh, it's a moisturiser and I'll tell you what, actually works really well as insect repellent, but I always take some like Mozzie Guard and stuff like that. Um, I don't know what the insects will be like this year, but the last thing you want to be doing is being attacked by mosquitoes uh, whilst you're attempting to shoot. Right, medication. Um, I take a couple of bits of medication. Um, we've had it in the past where people have rocked up at an event and they've forgotten their medication at home because it's a two-day event. They take their medication in the morning, they go out and, you know, so just make a point, put your medication in, but also just take some headache tablets. Um, I always carry headache tablets in my bag because, again, you might be out there. If you're there at the Worlds, you're going to be getting there at 7, 8 o'clock in the morning if you're session one. And if you're staying for the raffle, which I would strongly recommend you do because there's like 20 odd thousand quids worth of prizes being given away. You're going to be there till five or six o'clock in the evening because they're doing the raffle. It's going to be a long day, a long day in the heat and just, just take some headache tablets. There's a good chance you're going to need them. Um, I always carry a small first aid kit. I wish I could show it here, but I currently can't find it. So if I can't find it later today, I will be going out to buy another one. So a small first aid kit, keep that with you, plasters, stuff like that. You might, you know, trust me, you, you know, you might need it. And also a very tiny small kit, a uh, small kit, a very tiny, uh, a small tool kit. Keep that in your car because, and if you've got an even smaller one, keep it in your gun bag. I'd always recommend keeping, if your gun takes two or three Allen keys to break down, uh, you know, to split it down, keep them in your gun bag. Keep them in a little envelope, whatever because we've had it in the past where people have been out there and their butt pad has come loose or their stock bolt has come loose. You know, remember, if you start messing around with stock bolts, certainly on springers, it might affect your zero. But keep a little toolkit so that if something comes loose on your gun, you can just whip a, 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 a Allen key out and tighten it up. And yes, you are allowed to do that. As long as you're not mucking about with power, you are allowed to adjust your gun, or not adjust, sorry, you are allowed to return your gun to the condition that it started with. So you can't, oh, you know, I need to get out the peg on that one, I'm going to drop the hamster a bit, that's not allowed. But if your hamster comes loose, just say to your shooting colleagues, I'm just going to tighten this up and everything will be good. So that's sort of that stuff. Then when we're now getting onto the shooting section, and we will be shooting in a minute, prepping your kit. Now, this was my tin of pellets that work with my TX, but I've only got about 40 in there. Now, on the back, we've got the batch number and I've got a tin that's absolutely identical to that. But what I'm not going to do is I'm not gonna have those pellets get out there and shoot and then halfway through a comp, swap onto the other batch of pellets. Because if I did that, there's no guaranteeing they're gonna be the same. I've, I've had it in the past where everything looks identical, but then the pellets have been sort of uh, a bit funky. So they're gonna get retired. I'll just use them for standing practice when I'm able. 
and I'll open a brand new tin of pellets and the first thing I'll do is go onto the chronograph and make sure that everything is legal. The day before the comp, I'm going to weigh, or when I'm in a hotel on Friday night, I'm going to weigh 50 pellets for the following day, four or five just to go on the plink, just to make sure everything's good. And then I've got 45 for a 30 shot course, so that's good. And I'm going to weigh all of those between 841 and 849. Uh, they're the ones I'm going to use. Anything else that's outside of that gets used for practice. So check your pellets, check your power, and you're all good. Okay, so then you need to just check your zero. Uh, I use a 40 yard zero, so that's what we're going to be doing in a minute. Um, I've not shot a spring gun prone since MAD in June. That's the first Sunday of the month, so it's three months. I've shot that gun off of the table, but I've not shot it prone. And I'm genuinely interested to see how we're going to do. And I'm genuinely nervous to see how we're going to do. Um, three months is a long time not to shoot a gun. But it is what it is and we're going to have a bit of fun. Um, luckily I don't have to worry about air because I've got air all around me because it's a spring gun. But if you're shooting a PCP just make sure that you've not only got your tank but you've got your whip and you've also got your adapter. Uh, again trust me on more than one occasion we've had people turn up with air tanks but no way to put their air in the gun and yes we do laugh at people when they do that right so that's enough cobblers um we are going to get on with some shooting we're going to put a target out we're not going to mess around we're not going to put a 25 yards we're going to put a target out of 40 yards and we're going to see how I do first time in three months and let's just see how much I suck and trust me I'm gonna suck Oh, you're over there. Right. Okay, so here we are, and we are prone. We've got the target set out, 40 yards. Uh, now, a few people ask why we're shooting currently in this part of the garden, mainly because I haven't cut the lawns on the range, and I tried to the other day. Um, my, I've got a powered mower that I push, um, and my foot got caught on a bramble. I then gripped hard on the lawnmower to uh to try and steady myself but being a powered mow mower as i gripped it and pulled the lever up the, the mower shot off in front of me and pulled me uh yeah pulled me to the ground luckily i let go otherwise i'd have gone flying off down a range at 100 miles an hour ah if only i'd been filming i could have sent it to jeremy beadle and got myself 250 quid right okay Let's just have a look through here first. Well, we have a small issue that the very, very bright sun is bleaching out the target. But let's give it a go. Let's put a round down and let's see, and then we'll, we'll focus on using that. Oof. Well, the gun hasn't been shot for a while, so let's just put a marker down. These, uh, these targets from Benchrest UK are absolutely brilliant. I bung them out at like 25 yards or, you know, when I was doing the bench thing, and you can see everything absolutely perfectly. Um, I think maybe for doing 40 yards, because the little dots are only 8 millimetres across with 2 millimetres in the middle, um, I am struggling to see that because they're not really what they're designed for. 
but then you get you've got the other type of targets which are like the bullseye or the uh the actual proper targets um and there you know you can see them easily all right let's see Wow, well, okay, I'm pulling that left. Right, let's, we've got a bit of wind, but not that much. Let's have a look. Right, I'm gonna stick another marker down. We're just gonna use this card as a piece of card. I think that one went straight. Sometimes with a rifle, if it's not been shot for a little while, you need to put a few rounds through just to uh, settle everything down. Certainly with a PCP. Okay, that was better. Right, so, isn't that weird that the first one went left, the next one went really left, and then it went absolutely bang on. bit high. But then again, let's not forget, I've not shot a rifle prone for three months. So it might just be me being really bad. Right, still going for those bottom two. Fractionally left, but don't, let's not forget that we're still shooting. As I said, those circles are eight millimeters across. So if I was shooting a 15 mil target, I think all of those four would have killed it. And at 40 yards, you don't get 15 mils. Let's have a look. Okay, I'm dialing in now. I think it was head position. I don't think my head was perfectly central. So that's down to me. That's not down to the gun or anything. I think that's just down to me sucking. <laughs> Left again, just a fraction. But still not a bad group. We do one more from this prone position and then we'll talk about other things that we need to practice. Okay, I'm not sure which of those two little groups that one went through, but I'm hoping it's the one slightly on the right. So that's, that's not great, but it's still everything within, I don't know, with probably within like 12 millimetres. We'll ignore the one that went slightly high. But not all targets at the World Championships are going to be shot like this. Prone with the butt rested on the ground and nice and easy. Some of them, you're going to have to come up the peg. So we'll put a little marker down and then we're going to try some targets up the peg. So we're just going to go to the right hand side of that group. There we go. And now we're gonna come up the peg because I guarantee you there will be shots that you need to shoot like this.
I really hope I don't shoot my my phone camera that's down there. Safety. Not too bad, that's almost touching. And this is something you really will need to practice coming up the peg because you will have shots where they'll put a, a, you know, a big log in front of you or there'll be something in the way that forces you up the peg. And if you notice, it's partially in the shoulder. I'm also resting the bottom of this in the crook of my arm to give it stability. Okay. It's always weird that uh, I seem to shoot better off up the peg than I do off the deck, but I can never bring myself to actually start shooting like that properly. Right, so we'll stick with that same group, but, and I can guarantee you that this one is not going to be good because it's the thing that spring guns always struggle with off the wrong side of the peg because you've got nothing sort of to lean against. So let's have a go off the deck, wrong side of the peg. Safety. Did you see how much that went left? It is an absolute bane of my life shooting targets from the wrong side of the peg. But you see that that was consistently, consistently to the left. We've just got someone out there. Give me a sec, I'll be back in a minute. It's a weird thing, I know, that when you're coming off the wrong side of the peg, especially with a PCP, so especially with a spring gun, not so much with a PCP, the, the pellets do seem to go left. And I think that's because the gun naturally wants to go to the right. You've got to remember, there's a spring inside, the spring's compressed. When the spring expands, it's got a twist on it and it naturally wants to turn to the right. Um, and for some reason, the gun, when it's not being pushed up against the peg, it really seems to struggle to get accuracy. So whenever I shoot off the wrong side of the peg, I always aim on the right-hand side of the kill zone. Um, I found it a lot less, obviously, at 15, 20, 25 yards. But when you're out of 40, I'm sometimes outside the right-hand edge, and I find that that works for me. Luckily, they brought in a rule a while back that says you should be able to see the kill zone from both sides of the peg. So it doesn't happen very often. But there are times where coming off the wrong side will give you a big advantage because otherwise you need to get very, very close to a, a tree or something like that. So that will work better for you. But it's something by shooting paper that you can spot. I was consistently hitting the same distance left. So if you're being consistent and something is happen, happening, then you can find a workaround. So my practice over the next couple of days, well, tomorrow really, and the rest of today, is gonna to be checking all of my ranges. I'm gonna put targets out at 13, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, and 45, and just to make sure that everything tallies up with my yardage chart. I'm gonna make sure that the gun is legal over the chrono. I'm gonna make sure that everything is prepped and ready to go. So then when I get to the worlds, the only thing that can let me down is me. I know that all the kit is good. I know all the pellets are good. I know that I'm as prepared as I can be. And that's all that anyone can ever ask of you. Just be prepared as you can be. Well, hopefully some of you will be at the World Championships and I look forward to seeing you at Balderswood. Um, it should be a wonderful event. 
really looking forward to it. Um, I usually just have a bit of a giggle and, uh, and see if I can name a few people that will be world champions. So here are my, here are my uh, nominations for this year. Um, open class, the overall world champion I think will be. And I think there's a good chance that that's going to be Ben Bristow. Now, we had some good news yesterday. Richard Woods has got a new barrel for his tyre, which he said is like a laser. And he says there's absolutely no way that he can lose. So Richard is claiming for himself, but I'm going to say Ben Bristow. Uh, recoiling, I don't think it's going to be me. Um, Jonas uh, is going to be incredibly hard to beat, as he always is. But Owen is putting in some good scores. So I'm going to go with Owen this year. I think he stands a good chance. In the 2-2... Ed Tandy is always hard to beat, and so is Dan Measures. But I'm going for a wild card this year. I'm going for Nick Byrne. Nick, every now and then, puts in an absolutely stonking score, and I think this year could be his year. Um, juniors, I think Josh, I mean, Josh is banging in like 57s, 58s all the time. Absolutely cracking shooting. Um, veterans. Oh, that's going to be a hard one. Veterans. Uh, I think Pe Ken Pothecary is putting some good scores. Mike Burgess is always hard to beat. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know with veterans. Um, I don't know. Right, sticks. Um, Neil Wakelin has started shooting sticks. Um, whenever Neil takes up something, he's absolutely amazing. So I think Neil's going. So I'm going to go with Neil Wakelin. I think he's going to be the man to beat. Um, and the team event. Who's going to win? Well, last year, for the first time ever, England got slapped by Scotland. <sighs> well, we've stolen their, uh, their supply of iron brew this year. And I think someone told me that they are planning on deep frying um, Greg Morsey's uh, Walther. Is it Walther or is it an old style? I don't know. Basically, I think actually I think they're just going to deep fry Greg Morse. So I'm going to go with Wales. <laughs> no, um, I think England have got a really strong team this year. So I think England will probably uh, take the title back. But I think no matter what, I think it's going to be an amazing event with wonderful sponsors, great organisation, brilliant food, 300 plus people. I'm really looking forward to shooting the Worlds. Whether or not I'm going to compete the two days, complete the two days, I don't know. But I'm really looking forward to it. So I hope to see you all there. Take care of each other. Take care of yourselves. And we see you all again very, very soon. Ta-da.